Okay, gentlemen. Uh, so this week we did the ideal gas law, and we will not have a quiz. Uh, you had the lab and the homework, and I thought that was enough. But next week we will have a quiz, and it will cover all seven gas laws. So you've learned five of them. Uh, it'll cover all seven gas laws. So be sure to you know be ready for that. It's not anything super complex. Again, you know four of them, and now five. You knew four from last week, and five uh, including the ideal gas law. So be sure to be ready for that. I hope you're all doing well. You know, staying healthy and not going around other people that you shouldn't be going around, you know, uh, don't spread the virus, or at least try not to. Uh, hope you guys have a good weekend, uh, and again, uh, next week will be a quiz, no quiz this week, so don't worry about it. You do have your lab, which was due Thursday, uh, so, you know, you should have already turned that in, and uh, the Ideal Gas Law Worksheet is due Friday night at 6.30. Uh, so today I'm just going to go over some of the problems for your gas law worksheet. Uh, I will do all of them. I'm not, I'm not actually going to go through all of them on the video, but I will put out a key for all of them. Uh, but I just wanted to review really quick the ideal gas law. Uh, so the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. And it's actually uh, something that came from the combined gas law. And I went through in the last video how it came from the combined gas law. If you add N into that situation, you get... Uh, PV divided by NT equals a constant. Uh, so that constant happens to be R, or that's what we call it. Uh, that's the ideal gas constant. Uh, and this allows us to know, figure out a property of gas if we know the other three properties. So of the four properties, pressure, volume, uh, number of moles, and temperature, if we know three of them, we can figure out the fourth very effectively without measuring, without have to me having to measure it. And in certain situations, it's hard to measure one of those properties. It can be, just be a pain. Uh, so, uh, just a reminder, P is pressure. That's measured in kilopascals or atmospheres or millimeters of mercury. Uh, because of the different, differing R values, I have limited it to kilopascals and atmospheres here. Uh, so you aren't going to see millimeters of mercury uh, in ideal gas law problems. V is volume. That's measured in liters. Uh, so if I did give you something in milliliters, you would in fact have to convert. Uh, so it has to be in liters. N is number of moles, which shockingly is measured in moles. Uh, T is temperature in kelvins. Remember, temperature has to go into kelvins before you plug it in any equation. This is for all the gas laws. Uh, if you get temperature in Celsius, put it in kelvins, uh, and then move on. And the ideal gas constant is R. So R is this constant. Uh, and like any constant, it would depend on what units you're uh, using to... Uh, associate with one another. So constants really just show you the relationship between different units. And uh, the constant depends on really what units of pressure you use, because the other units we keep pretty constant. Uh, so it's 8.31 liter kilopascals per Kelvin mole, if you're using kilopascals, or 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole for problems that are using atmospheres. If you're asked to find the pressure, you can use either of these. It doesn't matter. Just be aware, if you use 8.31, your pressure will be in kilopascals. And if you use 0 0.0821, your pressure will be in atmospheres. And either number would be correct as long as you gave me the correct answer. So I will accept either answer as long as you show the work and label it correctly. If you give me a kilopascals number labeled in atmospheres or vice versa, that would be wrong. Uh, so that is kind of a quick rundown of the ideal gas law. Uh, so now let's get to some problems. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some of the problems on your worksheet. And again, I'm probably not going to go through all of them. Uh, and I will put a key to all of them, however, up online with this video. So problem one, I have four moles of gas at a pressure of 5.66 atmospheres and a volume of 12 liters. What is the temperature? Uh, so again, I like to just go through and label all the variables. That would be a volume. Uh, this would be a pressure. This would... Excuse me, that was my mistake. This would be a number of moles because I can read. Uh, so this would be N, number of moles. This is still a pressure. Uh, 12 liters is your volume. So what is the temperature? Temperature is what it's asking about. So that's your question. Uh, so ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. We need to rearrange this uh, so that temperature is by itself to isolate temperature. Temperature equals PV over uh, NR. Uh, so we're just moving NR underneath the PV. 
that's our rearrangement. Uh, now, all we have to do is plug in the numbers and do the math, and once that's done, I will. Okay, so if I set it up and do all the math, uh, first of all, 5.6 atmospheres times 12 liters divided by 4 moles times 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres for Kelvin moles. So since the pressure was in atmospheres, I use the R value that's associated with that unit. Uh, so 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere for Kelvin mole. Uh, I get 204.6 kelvins uh, so temperature would be in kelvins so if you put it if you have to put it in in kelvins it'll come out in kelvins as well uh, and because i have one sig fig and four moles i rounded to 200 kelvins i'm not going to be picky about the rounding yes you should round the sig figs no if you put 204.6 i would not mark it wrong uh, so on to the second one uh, problem number two if i have an unknown quantity of gas uh, so you're looking for moles, unknown quantity, that's going to be N, uh, at a pressure of 121.6 kilopascals. So I'm in kilopascals, so that already determines what R value I'm going to be using for uh, the ideal gas constant. A volume of 31 liters and a temperature of 87 degrees Celsius. Now, 87 degrees Celsius immediately we're going to turn that into uh kelvins before i do anything else i do it so it's just 87 plus uh 273 and you get 360 kelvins and again it's 360 kelvins not 360 degrees kelvin because kelvin is not a degree scale it's not relative it's absolute uh, zero kelvin literally means no particle movement uh, it's a straight measurement of particle movement, whereas zero degrees Fahrenheit is just a random set uh, number. It's where water, well, zero degrees Fahrenheit is where ice water froze or something. Uh, it was weird. But zero degrees Celsius is where wa water freezes. Uh, but it's not the lowest you can go. And since you can't have negative particle motion, uh, that's why these are called, it's called degrees uh, instead of a standard just unit. Uh, so 360 Kelvins. Uh, and I'm looking for N. I'm looking for number of moles. So again, I'm just going to start with PV equals NRT. And you don't have to show the original equation on every uh, problem. If you just want to show the rearranged equation, that would be perfectly fine. Uh, and now I'm going to rearrange it. N equals PV over RT. And I have all those numbers. Uh, just make sure I use the appropriate R, the 8.31 uh, in this case. Uh, but I have all those numbers, so I'm going to plug them in and do the math. So I've put the math together, 121.6 kilopascals times 31 liters divided by 8.31 liter kilopascals per Kelvin mole. So that's the R value I use uh, times 360 Kelvins, again, in Kelvin. Uh, do all the math, you get 1.26 moles. And since I only have two sig figures and 31 liters, two sig figs and 31 liters, uh, I'm limited to two sig figs. Uh, so I round to 1.3 moles. Uh, so that's number two. Uh, okay, looking at number three. If I contain three moles of gas, so that would be your N, your number of moles, uh, in a container with a volume, so there's your volume, of 60 liters and a temperature, of 400 kelvins. That's already in Kelvin, so we don't have to convert it. Uh, what is the pressure inside the container? Uh, so again, starting out with our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and we want to uh, isolate P. So P equals uh, NRT divided by V. Just divide both sides by V. Uh, and again, we have all these numbers. Now, we actually have a choice here, though, because R isn't necessarily uh, indicated. We, aren't, we don't have a pressure. We're finding the pressure. So if I use the pressure for atmospheres, the R value for atmospheres, I will get pressure in atmospheres. And if I use the R value for kilopascals, I will get pressure in kilopascals. I'm going to use the R value for kilopascals here. However, if you use the R value for atmospheres, that is perfectly acceptable. Just make sure the units are labeled correctly. Your answer should be labeled in atmospheres. So I'm going to fill out the equation and do the answer and go over it really quick uh, when I come back. 
Okay, so if you set it up and do all the math using the R value for kilopascals, uh, I got 166.2 kilopascals, and because three moles and also 400 kelvins only have one sig fig, I rounded that to 200, which would be one sig fig, 200 kilopascals. Again, if you don't round, I'm not going to kill you on that. Uh, if you did this for atmospheres, you should have gotten somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.64, I believe, atmospheres. So uh, if you did that in atmospheres and got 1.64, uh, you would have rounded to two atmospheres for the one sig fig, uh, and that would be fine. Uh, just make sure you label atmospheres when it's atmospheres and kilopascals when it's kilopascals. Okay, so gentlemen, the last example I'm going to do is number four because that gives you one of each type of example looking for pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature. Uh, so that's all the rearrangements of this equation uh, that you could want because you won't be solving for the ideal gas constant. We don't solve for R. We already have it. Uh, I will put a key to all the problems uh, along with this video. So I'll just call it video notes and I'll continue. I won't work through, but I will continue uh, and post all the uh, other answers, numbers 5 through 12. So you'll have that available as well. Again, one of the main things, Celsius to Kelvins. Convert Celsius to Kelvins before you do anything else uh, with the math. So. Uh, number four, if I have 7.7 .7 moles of a gas, so that would be our uh, N, at a pressure of 0.09 atmospheres, which is not a lot of pressure, uh, that would be our P, and because it's atmospheres, we know what our value we'll be using, and a temperature of 56 degrees Celsius. We have degrees Celsius, the first thing I'm going to do is convert that to Kelvin, uh, 56 plus 273 is 329 kelvins. What is the volume uh, of the container? So we're looking for volume. So again, we'll start with the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And this time we're rearranging for volume. So volume equals NRT over P. Uh, so that's how we rearrange it. We have all those numbers. We just plug them in. Uh, and do the math. So I will come back when that is complete. Okay, so when we do the math, 7.7 uh, .7 moles times 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole times 329 Kelvins divided by 0 0.09 atmospheres. We get 2,311 liters. Uh, and because of the one sig fig in the pressure, the 0 0.09 atmospheres, uh, I would round that to 2,000 liters or two kiloliters, because the metric system works nicely that way, and you can do that if you want. Uh, it's less writing. Uh, e any of those answers would be correct, though. If you didn't round, uh, I'm not taking points off. So those are some ideal gas law problems. Again, I'll leave the rest done and, and do the key. But if you have any questions, uh, come into the Zoom meeting or email me. Uh, as long as you know the equation, you know how to apply it, and you remember to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, and you remember to use the right R value, you should be fine. Again, no quiz this week. Uh, your lab and uh, this homework I thought was enough. But the quiz next week will cover seven gas laws. So you know five of them now. We have two more to learn next week. And we'll cover all seven uh, on the quiz. It'll probably be a seven-question quiz. Uh, so nothing too huge, but you'll have to use each of the gas laws once. Okay, have a good weekend, gentlemen. I will see you again on Monday.